Thomas Tilzos, Head of Portfolio Strategy at Allianz Global <coughs> Investors in Frankfurt, and joins us now. Thomas, great to see you there. What's your biggest wor worry right now? Is it Spain and Europe? Yes, uh, definitely. There are other worries around the world. Oil has been one, <coughs> Iran and Israel has been one, but currently still the euro crisis still is the greatest concern. The key question will be uh, also to uh, the answer to all of which just heard about Spain and Italy is will we be able to buy enough time to consolidate the budgets across uh, Europe? In my view, everything we have seen, also the Greek restructuring, is all about buying time. We, need, we will need four or five years to consolidate things, at the same time maintain growth, and uh, that is the open question. So this is counterbalanced actually by quite good developments in the U.S. We are quite content with the U.S. economic development and also with the Asian economic development. Japan has been a surprise. So open question mark Europe, surprise on the U.S. side. Uh, between these polls, you need to decide, make up your mind in terms of an asset allocation these days. Yeah, now various markets have had an awful lot of support from the long-term financing, the cheap money from the ECB, the LTRO. Do you sense really the effects of the LTRO are really wearing off quicker than most people expected? No, definitely. I think uh, the LTRO has one of the more, most genius uh, moves to consult, to actually uh, uh, chill down markets, and, and we have had quiet markets over the past several weeks because it solved one key issue, and the key issue was the financing, the short-term financing of uh, banks uh, in Europe. That is also the key concern besides the, the pure debt crisis in Italy and Spain. The concern is that uh, the money market between banks in Europe is not functioning. The ECB is basically uh, jumping in as a mediator, but you don't have a, the, the market between banks is basically dead. And uh, that will also be the key issue, uh, whether it's possible during the year to revive the interbank market in Europe so they will trust each other and lend money. Currently, it's not the case, and that's another key concern we have in Europe. Now, uh, let's talk about equities and presumably stock picking geographically and by sector has never been more important and perhaps never been so difficult. Where exactly do you stand right now? Well, we, we are actually quite constructive still on emerging markets and on Asia x Japan because uh, our core belief is in, in times of declining growth rates or slow growth rates, which we face this year, we have two to two and a half growth in the U.S. We have very subdued growth in Europe with the northern core markets keeping up quite well. So it's investing in an environment of slower growth, which basically means in turn that for everything that has stable growth and high growth, you'll be paying a premium for that. So we're searching on a global basis for stable growers. It's a basically a similar theme we had towards the end of last year and also in the first quarter. And uh, the analytical work is focused on that. And <clears throat> the interesting situation is that you find those stable growers across uh, uh, quite several sectors. So, so a sector strategy is very difficult. You cannot really say you take basic resources only or technology only, because the, the theme is you need the stable growers out of each sector. You find them in software, you find them in IT, but you also find them in automobiles and in some of the basic resources. So it's quite a mixed picture and stock picking is probably, uh, it's not sector picking, it's stock picking will be the theme of the next couple months. Is this what you call your bubble strategy for sectors? Can you just explain what that means? Excuse me, which strategy? Yes, you say that, uh, I was looking at your notes and you say you have a bubble strategy for sectors. Is that the sort of thing you are talking about? Yeah, it's a, we call it a barbell strategy, which means we have also defensive as well as cyclical sectors. So uh, it, it's also, after you had this gigantic performance in the first quarter, it is very difficult just to continue with cyclical uh, stories. Also, with the, all the growth questions and the structural problems we have. So what you need sector-wise is actually a mix out of the old cyclical stories, like automobiles or basic resources. And on the other side, you need household goods, for example, or still food and beverage, although some of them are quite expensive, because you need to balance out your portfolio with these stable growers and more of the defensive 
uh, stocks. We are not into telecoms, we are not uh, into pharmaceuticals these days, but we're trying to balance out our portfolios as much as possible so we have the right mix of old cyclical successful stories and defensive growers. Thomas Tilzer, great to talk to you, Head of Portfolio Strategy at Allianz Global Investors in Frankfurt. Thanks for your time.